Kentucky being led into this interrogation room is 23-year-old Cordante Walker. According to witness testimony, Cordante had been arguing with his girlfriend after a long night of drinking. The argument escalated and Cordante assaulted her and then ran her over with his car. What Cordante doesn't know is that the impact killed her instantly. Tell us what happened out there. Listen, sir, this is the 110% truth. Okay. February, or wait, August 26th, mm -hmm. which was yesterday, okay. was my girlfriend's birthday, 23rd birthday. Okay. So I was drinking a little bit. Where was this at? At the, this uh, building. This at building. the steakhouse? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we had a good time. I had videos in my phone, wherever my phone is. I had a good time. You know, she dressed up, whatever. We leave. We end up, she, while we're, while we're about to leave, her mom calls her. She's like, you know, you guys want to come to the house? You know, it's your birthday. I want to see you. Mm -hmm. So they go see her at her mom's house. We go over to her mom's house. We're taking shots. Everybody's having a good time. Literally, it's no weird, nothing, no nothing. I leave because I had to go to my brother's house. He lived right down the street. I had to go to my brother's house to drop him off a shirt because he needed a white t-shirt. You know, this was, I got one in my trunk, so I dropped him off. Mm -hmm. Then I came back. And my girlfriend was like, I want to go back to my mom's house. You know, they're trying to get this, they're trying to get me a bottle for my birthday. They're trying to drink with me. It's her mom, her her stepdad, her brother, her nieces, her nephews. Mm -hmm. You know? And she's like, Are you sure you want to go back there? I wish I would have said no. But I was like, you know, it's your birthday, babe. What do I look like telling you you can't kick with your family? Why'd she ask that? Yeah, right. she just she just she just asked because she was like, you know, do you are you sure you want to go to my family's house? Are you sure that's something you want to do? You okay. know? Because I had took her out, so she I guess she was like trying to show me respect to make sure that it was something that we would both enjoy. Mm -hmm. But I was like, no, that's fine. You know, you can go to your family's house, whatever. I'm not going to ever get in the way you spend time with your family because I'm very family oriented myself. So that happens. To be honest with you, her family is Hispanic. They drink a lot of tequila. They mm -hmm. drink a lot. You feel me? Mm -hmm. When it's turn up time. So I'm just hanging with them. I'm feeling it because their family's liking me. They're laughing at my jokes. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I end up getting drunk. No, I kid you not. I don't really drink. My dad's an alcoholic. I'm not even trying to give you like bullshit details, but it's just details. Right. So we're drinking. I don't know where I passed out at. I don't know where I went to sleep at, but I know it was in that household. In her, her mom's in her house. Mom's house. Mm -hmm. So I wake up, and when I wake up, it's like everybody's arguing. I don't know how long I was asleep for. I don't know nothing. But Cordante claims that he passed out during the party, and when he woke up, he was surrounded by people arguing with each other. His girlfriend appeared drunker and angrier than usual, so they decided to leave together. We're driving. Mind you, her mom only lives a good 10 minutes away from our house. Mm -hmm. Me and my girlfriend, Josh, we live together. Okay. And my mom, my biological mom, she's in Vegas. She gets back tonight at 11 o'clock. We all live right there next to each other. That's why I moved to Kent. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we're all right there. Whatever my mom needs help with, I can help her with. Mm -hmm. So... I don't really, I, I can't really tell you how the argument started, but it was like, it was like, I'm like, you know, what are you mad for? What are you beefing for? You know? And she's just like, you don't get it. Da -da -da. My brother was fighting my mom's, my mom's boyfriend. And da -da -da. I'm like, okay, what's that? Yeah. She gets mad off of what I said. Mm hmm. I'm like, you know, whatever, bitch, you're tripping. I called her a bitch, you know, I'm like, whatever, bitch, you're tripping. So she gets mad because of yeah, that. Okay. Yeah, you know, but she was already mad. So me right, saying right. bitch just made it worse, you know? Uh -huh. I was like, whatever, bitch, you're tripping, you know? But I didn't say, like, bitch, you're tripping. I was just like, whatever, right. bitch, you're tripping, you know? And from then, she pulls over, stops stops on the side of the road, get out, starts walking. So I'm like, bro, give me my keys. If you're going to walk away, give me my keys. My The house is right here, so I'm going to just park and go to sleep anyway. I'm hella tired. That's right. it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, bro, I'm yelling at her, like, not even aggressive, but I'm I'm like yelling so she can hear me like, where are my keys? Where are my keys? Give me my keys so I can start the car. You took my keys. Mm -hmm. She's not turning around. She's not saying shit. So I look around the car. I see that there's a key on the floor. So I'm like, okay, she left the key. That's why she wouldn't turn around. But she had like threw the key, I guess, you know? So I grab the key, start the car. I pull up next to her. I'm like, bro, what is the problem? Because it's hella late at night. And what road were you on then? It's the, the same road. It's the same road. Oh, it's so you road. hadn't turned yet? No, I hadn't okay. turned. I so hadn't did nothing. Okay. Like, sir, I promise you, I probably went, like, about 10 feet far with the car. What side of the road was she walking on? Right side. This side? Okay. So she, she, I pull up. I'm like, what are you beefing for? Duh, duh, duh. She's not saying shit. Then she just, like, out of nowhere, she just started going ham. Like, you know, she was like, fuck it, I'm about to go ham on him. He got me fucked up. I got out the car. Mm -hmm. She ends up getting in the car. 
I got out, I ended up getting in the car again, but I was trying to pull off this time. Cause I'm like, okay, I'm trying to be, okay. I'm trying to be like the escalate situation. I okay. see that she just wants to argue. Okay. I didn't let her, I'm telling her to come back in the car, come back in the car. We start going back and forth, start going back and forth. She starts making all these threats like, you know, I'm gonna do this and this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, but I'm not even really paying no attention to it. Was this in the car then? No, it's outside the car. So you're still outside. Yeah. So she hadn't got it. Yeah, you told her to get in the car, yeah. but you guys were still outside. Yeah, so we, so she's making all these threats, doing all this extra shit. You know, I'm like, you know what? And I'm out of here, you know? I'm not gonna sit here and argue with you. My house is right across the street. I want to go home and go to sleep. That's mm -hmm. what my, I didn't say all that, but that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, you know, f it. And she lives there with you. Yeah, she lives there with me. So I uh, get in the car. Mm -hmm. And when I get in the car, does she get in? I know. Okay. I'm trying to skirt the f off before mm -hmm. she gets in the car. Because mm -hmm. you know how girls are in high school around the age. They argue with you and be like, leave, leave, leave. And then as soon as you actually start to leave, oh, come on, don't leave me. Or, you know, they want to hop in the car. They mm -hmm. want to call you and be like, oh, I'm sorry and shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So that shit happened, but she's trying to hop in the car, you know? But I'm just trying to hurry up and pull off. Mm -hmm. So when I hurry, but I'm worried about myself because I already have a case that I'm on probation for right now, you know what I'm saying? And it's DV shit, and I didn't even do it, you know? So I like, don't even get into all that. But, you know, I'm just like, now I'm not trying to get that charge again, you know? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to jail, period. There's mm -hmm. not no way around it. So so I get in the car, I'm trying to skirt off. She hops in front of the car. The car hits her, right? A random person, I don't know where the f they came from, I don't know where, I really don't know even when they came in the picture. Mm -hmm. They come around, they're like, oh, you cuter, you cuter, da, da, da. you probably cuter, don't run, don't run. But mind you, the person that's saying that or whatever, witness, whatever, they have a gun and they let off multiple shots. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I'm like, I didn't want to leave her. When she got in front of the car, I felt bad. I didn't yeah, want to right. leave her. I love her. That's my girlfriend. So I get out the car. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pick her up to take her in the car so I can take her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. The dude's like, don't fucking touch her. Don't fucking touch her. I didn't look at him one time. All I was worried about is her. So right. I couldn't even tell you what the dude looked like. But all I'm saying is, I know he had a gun out because he was like, I'll fucking shoot you. I'll and shoot you, da, 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 da. and I'm really not saying nothing to him. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just, the only thing I said to him is, bro, I didn't try to hit her. Mm -hmm. She's trying to stop me. She hopped in front of the car, you know? He goes, don't grab her. Don't pull off. I'm calling the police. I'm trying to grab her just to get to the hospital, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm grabbing her. While I'm grabbing her, he lets off a good two shots. Boom, boom, like a warning shot. I got shot in my shoulder in December. I have this scar right here. So that's like, you know, gunshots just don't sit well with me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So... He starts shooting, it made me more of in a rush, like, oh yeah, I'm about to get her in the fucking car. Mm -hmm. So I grab her, pick her up, put her in the car. At this point, it's like she's like a dead body, just weight, like, mm -hmm. you know, a dead weight. So I throw her in the car, we're pulling off. When we pull off, we're going straight because we have to turn around to turn back out of the neighborhood, you know? So I go straight, and then he lets off a good five shots. And was she, did she, did you pick her up and put her in the car? I picked, I picked her up by okay. myself and put her in the car. Where at in the car? It was, it, uh, the front seat. Okay. I'm pretty sure. To the point to where I'm such in a rush shirt, I didn't even get to close the passenger side door. Because I'm trying not to get shot. You right, know what right, I'm right. saying? Because, you know, he feels like I'm threatening her, so he, I guess he do have the right in his head to kill me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to hurry up, get her in the car. I hurry up, get her in the car, try to close the door. Her feet is like this, like weird, you know? Just hella weird. Like outside the car? Yeah, like it's like, it's like towards the door, you know? And I try to close it, but her foot's sticking out so it didn't close. But I'm like, and I'm not trying to get shot, so I just pull off, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I pull off, he just starts shooting. I don't know if he was shooting at me. I don't know if he was shooting in the air, whatever. I mm -hmm. never looked at him. I was just trying to hurry up and focus on me and my situation, you know? And uh, when we get to that situation, uh, he, you know, he keeps on saying, like, oh, you killed her, you killed her, I'm calling the police, I'm calling the police. And I'm like, damn, the police gonna show up. I'm big, I'm black, I have tattoos on my face. Like, I just look like... A woman beater, you know? I fit the profile, you know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm already scared off top. It's like, damn, you know, this is a fucked up situation for me. The witness that fired his gun at Cordante claims that he heard a female screaming, so he went to check it out. As he gets closer, he sees Cordante assaulting his girlfriend on the side of the road. Cordante then got into his car, backed the vehicle up, turned it into the direction of his girlfriend, and hit the accelerator. I pulled over to the church. I'm really sitting her in the car. 
What the fuck is wrong with you? Wake up, wake up, da, 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 da. what's wrong, what's wrong? Wake up, wake up, wake up. If she has any bruises on her face, whatever, I'll on it to all that. Cause when she was passed out, I thought she died. Like mm-hmm. I really thought I killed her, you know? And that wasn't what I was trying to do. She hopped in front of the car trying to be on some just extra shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So I get out the car, I'm like, babe, wake up, wake up. The police is coming for us, the police is coming up for us. Come on, wake up, wake up. She's really like a dead body, bro. Like she's really sitting there not moving. Like to the point to where I open her eyes and I'm digging in her eyes like wake up wake up i'm slapping the shit out of her bro mm-hmm. to the point where i thought she was dead i'll keep it under i socked her in her face wake up wake up like mm-hmm. i'm scared i don't want her to be dead you feel me i may not yeah. like you at the moment but i don't want you to die you know how many so, times did you sock her i only socked her one time one time but slapping her i probably slapped her like a good 10 times trying to wake her ass up i'll mm-hmm. keep it under with you I, I was just i was worried i didn't want her to die nothing okay. so I, I was slapping the shit out of her ass just trying to wake her up wake her up wake her up she never yeah. was gonna kill her even more i mean that's not helping this shit she unconscious you don't expect her to wake up when she got hit by a car i mean that's really stupid of you doing that take her just take her to the hospital common sense just take her to the hospital they can see what's wrong with her you could have told the whole story to the hospital or to the people you know in the hospital or whatever you know okay common sense. so i'm like damn <clears throat> she died you know that's what my that's what my mind was at attempting to explain all the bruising on his girlfriend's face Cordante claims that he inflicted the bruises after hitting her with a car. This, of course, is a lie, because according to the witness, he assaulted her before hitting her with a car. So I'm like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? She's really not moving. I drag her out the car, and I'm like, wake up, wake up. And that's when I start smacking her and all that shit, like, you know, wake up. Like, I didn't want her to die. I'm not trying to kill you nothing. Like, I don't Wait, want wait, wait, hold on. You went from putting her in the car. It doesn't make any sense you putting her in the car, slapping her, tell her to wake up. You said you was going to take her to the hospital. You should have did that. You, I mean, you probably wouldn't have went to jail. You probably wouldn't have went to jail if you was telling the truth. I don't think he's telling the truth. Why would you take her back out the car just to slap the shit out of her, tell her to wake up? That doesn't make any sense. Take her to the hospital. See if she if she's okay. Yeah, he, I think he done something that he shouldn't have. I think he actually did something to her. It's her birthday. Yesterday was her birthday, right. you know? So I'm like, you know, I'm, just, I'm slapping her. I'm like, wake up, wake up, wake up. She don't wake up. You know, I'm like, the police is coming. I hear the siren, the siren go to shit. And I'm just in my head like, you know what? I'm about to go to jail. I, I see. I know I am because look how it looks, you know? And then uh, I... Uh, I go, she's laying down. I'm probably trying to wake her up for a good five minutes. She's going down. She don't wake up. She don't even move. Don't budge, bro. So I didn't even know where my phone is. I don't even know where my other shoe is. Oh, yeah. So, so what happened, man? I hopped that fence, and then the police is passing by because they already got calls of the gunshots and all that shit. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're pulling by, and they see me. But when they see me, I just put my hands in because mm-hmm. I don't have no reason to run. I'm not, like, I literally do not do shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, I'm not trying to cause no problem. I'm not trying to be, cause, you no know, bush with the police. You can even ask the people that inhaled me. I was tell, asking them over and over again, like, can I do this? Can I do that? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to give you a hard time because this is the last place I want to be. Mm-hmm. So I do that. They see me. They come get me. And when they come over, I just, at this time, I'm just crying in tears because I'm just so scared. I'm like, man, I know how it looks, bro. I didn't do nothing. Like, literally, you know, I'm just crying. I'm like, I know I'm about to get charged for some shit I didn't do. At this point, I'm thinking she's dead. So I'm like, damn, they're going to charge me with murder, homicide, whatever. You know, I'm just, it's just hella shit going through my head. So I'm crying in the police. Is going on and on. They're like, it's okay, you know. All we're gonna do, all we're, we're not even, you're not even under arrest. We're just gonna put the handcuffs on you so you can talk to a detective. Da, da, da. And I'm just like, no, nah, man, this is fucked up because look at the situation. I mean, I didn't even do nothing, you know. After listening to Cordante's story, the detective has a few questions, starting with a previous domestic violence case he had been involved in. So you mentioned something about a domestic violence. He looks like a Cordante. He looks like a Cordante. Let's look at him. He looks like it. He looks like a Cordante. That name fits his face too. Once before, was that with her? No, that was with somebody else. It was in Auburn. And, oh, okay. um, right. That that case was the girl. <clears throat> I she the whole story was she wanted me to bring her house keys because I was at her house, but it was like her sister's house. I wasn't supposed to be there. 
So she's like, you know, Karate, come bring my keys, come bring my keys. But I'm like, you know, I'm doing shit. You know, I can't just come to you right now. Mm-hmm. So then when I finally bring her the keys and I turn, she pulls, she just hits her gas and like pulls up hella close to my car. And as soon as she pulls up to my car, she just start kicking my car and hitting and all shit. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So then I socked her windshield. And then she got out the car, she grabbed my chain, ripped my chain, threw it on the ground, pushing me all in my face. And then I pushed her off of me. And then, like, just the video of me being bigger than her, it looks horrible. Oh, it's on video. You know, it looks horrible. So it's like, I just took the deal for what um, I can get. <clears throat> oh, the only thing I ever, only thing I did, I was slapping her and I punched her, but I wasn't not no mad shit. I was scared. Yeah, I didn't want her to, like, die. I really thought okay. she was dead. It but. doesn't make sense. If you really think your girlfriend's deceased, why would you punch her? That doesn't maybe make any sense. Why are you punching and expecting her to wake up? That's not going to wake nobody up. That's not going to wake nobody up. That doesn't make any sense. How are you going to wake somebody up if they got hit by a car? If you hit her with a car and you're going to punch her and slap her and expect her to wake up? That don't make any sense. Right. I Like, you know, so I, that's all I was doing, just trying to wake her up. The only other thing I did, I opened her eyes with my hands and I was like, Dang, bro, are you okay? She just did not say nothing. Like, her eye didn't even move, you know? And I'm just like, oh, fuck no. So I, like, I really touched her eye and was, like, rubbing on her eye to see if she was going to wake up. That's she not going to help you. That's, that's not going to help Someone her. That she might that's... have had look like a bite mark on her face. Do you know anything? Why are you going to... Open someone's eyelid and start moving around it with your finger and inspect her to what what kind of what I never heard that before in my life. That's the stupidest thing I ever hear somebody say. The stupidest thing. Fucking dummy. Obviously an abusive boyfriend. Obviously an abusive one. Cause I feel like that's what he did. Think about that. Like no. do you remember like maybe like biting her to see if she'd wake up? No. I probably did though. Yeah. I probably did. But so like, why I was would really you bite her? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I really thought she was dead. Why would you panicking. bite her? I was slapping her. So this is like some Twilight shit, you know, when, you know, when uh, Bella died technically and then Edward was biting Bella just to, you know, bring him back to life. I don't know. That's not going to help you. That is not going to help. That ain't going to help her wake up. You biting her and shit. I was shaking the f*** out of her. I was like, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. At this point. Cordante still doesn't know his girlfriend is dead. He just believes she was knocked unconscious. What's notable is that throughout the interrogation, Cordante never asks if she is okay. He seems solely concerned with his own situation and any potential jail time. No, after, since after she got hit by the car, yeah. there was no moaning, no groaning, no movement. It was really when I'm dragging her to the car, it's dead weight. Like, you right. know, it's like it's no no effort from her yeah. at all. Like, yeah. And I'm dragging her around, it's dead weight. Could you tell that she was breathing or not? I never, honestly, I never even paid attention. It's funny because he never mentioned that throughout the whole time he was talking about trying to wake her up, slap her around just to make sure she's okay. They didn't even make any sense. He didn't even he didn't even talk about checking her pulse, see if she was breathing or not, and expecting her to wake up and start slapping and punching her. and you expect her to wake up, not to mention you bitter. That didn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. I just wanted her to say I'm okay, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. I really was just I was really hella scared. The fact that you did say that I do remember. I, the, the biting shit because when that when when it happened I remember I slapped I was slapping the shit out of her hell hard mm -hmm. and then I and then I punched her and then I lifted up her head and I was I was like grabbed her hair but I was shaking her head like while she was laying on her back so her head was like kind of up like this and I'm like bro wake up wake up wake up and I'm like the police is coming I can hear the sirens just getting closer yeah. and closer so I start kissing her on her face you know start kissing her on her face she's not waking so then you know, I I remember that I beat her on her face I remember that okay. I remember that. I mean, I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I, I bit her. Like, no, I, I don't know if it was hard, man. Okay. I just know I was trying to do anything I could to get her to wake up. Like, yeah. even if it was me causing her some pain and her saying, ow, fuck, that hurt. Like, okay. if I could have broke her arm and she woke up, I would have did it all. Just because I, I really, at that point, I really thought she was dead. Okay. Cordante begins wondering if his girlfriend is dead. So he asks the detective if she is still alive. Is she dead? So... Yeah, I don't actually don't know anything about her status. Yeah. So I know that the fire department showed up, and that's literally just because of the way that things worked out. So yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll find out a condition for you. Yeah. I just like. Well, so, 
like honestly, I could look you guys in your eye, and I really could say this genuinely. <laughs> I did not mean to hit her. I did not want to harm her. I did not want to do anything. The only time that I caused her harm that you could say was intentional is when I was slapping her and punching her just for her to wake up. Like I was doing anything I could. Like I told you, I was digging in her eyes, yeah. trying to get her to wake up. I just wanted a reaction. Yeah, she didn't give me no signs of being yeah. alive. None. Like no. Oh stop! It wasn't no. Uh, it wasn't no. Oh, nothing. this hurts. Like it was nothing. Like when I'm dragging her, she's just. So like, what's, what's gonna happen to me? Honestly, so I, and you'll know obviously since we know. So yeah. kind of the way this thing goes down or went down, is it whatever took place with you and your girl yeah. happens right yeah. when that happens. Once the officers show up certain stuff they, they kind of assess the scene yeah. and decide whether we need to be called yeah so which is what ended up happening the detectives got called so yeah. i only know a real small part of what's going on and pretty much it's kind of straight from you yeah right yeah so once we're done here we're going to go and kind of find out and talk to some of the officers and the other sergeants yeah. and then at that point we'll have an idea of what's going on and what's okay. going to happen from this point on um I, you know it's just i don't know I mean, it's kind of a weird situation, right? I mean, yeah. um, so I'm gonna have to sit in a cell, pretty much. The chances are strong, in all honesty. Oh, and I'm, just, I'm, you're not a BS kind of guy, and I don't want to BS you, right? Yeah. So, um, it's just what the part that's really odd, and you might be able to, and I, well, I think it's even odd to you, is it sounds like you really didn't hit her that hard with a car I to did. really hurt her too badly. I did. That's why she probably, it's like, I don't think she has no broken legs, nothing. Like, I, she shouldn't have none of that, bro. It kills me, because I'm like, oh my God, I hate, I hate it, bro. I'm like, I'm really like, I hate small spaces, and me being in these cell is killing right. me over something I did not do. Like, yeah, I just right. want to be no with I need to fight or what people are trying to charge me with. They're going to try to say out. And we're, we're going to tell you, obviously. I don't honestly. I don't even know at this point what's going to come of this. I really don't. And yeah. like I said, I'm not kind of a, you know, I'm straight up. I I tell you, um, like I said, we kind of came in this just having pretty much a little basis of knowledge, kind of on what was learned by the officers yeah. but most of what we're hearing right now of this and that's why we're having you go in so much detail yeah because that's important right yeah. that's important so for us to know exactly what took place how it took place where yeah. it took place yeah um once we find out we'll we're gonna let you know obviously yeah. um and that's why you know you're not in cuffs right now we're just having kind of a conversation yeah um it's just like so kind of the, the sticking point is is how she the you know getting hurt from kind of what it sounds like from basically what you're describing kind of a low speed impact it really was a low it was not a high speed impact like it was not it didn't have even enough space or right. time and, to get a high speed and i think you mentioned this but let me ask again the distance from that tree because apparently that's probably where she stepped out from yeah. and the front of your car was how far before you tired like leave? this far the front of my car is my knee the trees right there so like literally you had five or six feet of it, it literally room to not, accelerate it was not that. that far all right the detective steps out of the room to review the case and ensure no further questions are needed when he returns he informs cordante that they have video footage contradicting his story so like what 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 do I what do I gotta like you know what do I have to look forward to dealing with now? Well, let me uh, let me get bring this back out there and then I'll let you know. So um, once we we'll complete this inter interview and then I'll let you know what's gonna happen. Are you like are you guys gonna keep me in custody? Like well, that's kind of what we're saying. What I was telling you a little bit earlier. Yeah. Um, it's there's we just have a small part of this. Yeah. Right now it's not a small part because it's a big part. It's yeah. just we have to kind of talk to the other officers real quick yeah. and then a decision will be made yeah so we can't tell you it's not like i'm keeping something from you we we got to find out we got to talk to them and then obviously you'll be the first to know yeah so i'm not gonna sit there and like the you know bs you i i more than you <laughs> know i mean here's the thing man right it's stuff happens and it's it's and this is my experience in life bizarre things happen 
right? And sometimes they're unfortunate, sometimes they're not. This is one of those situations where they're unfortunate, right? Mm -hmm. The circumstances of, of you, you know, getting into it with your girl and her getting hurt by the car and the guy with the gun, mm -hmm. it, it, it happens. This is too much. So you're, your willingness to talk about it is huge, right? Yeah. Cause I I need to let everybody know I'm not hiding. Yeah, anything. no, and I trust me. I, I appreciate didn't, that. I was never on no harming DV, right. none of that shit. And like, like I said, it's it, we appreciate it because it does help us a lot. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, and like I, this shit is really like beyond me. Like like I like I don't even, I'm not making no excuses for nothing. But it's just like damn. How could you have a good ass day and me just going to sleep and waking up, it changed the whole dynamic of the day. Yeah. And it's like, you should have just left me and never came back. Yeah. Well, I mean, and you could sit there and could have, should have would all day long. Oh, right? And I just, I, I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. I just, man, I swear I wish I had a little time machine. Man, because I would definitely just be like, oh, you're leaving? You came back? Leave again. Yeah. I It'd be nice, nice. you yeah. know. Like, man, I'm gonna figure out what I gotta do for yeah. this. As soon as Detective G comes in, I mean, you know, there's like no way they would release me and be like, I, honestly, I don't know. I really they ain't gonna release you. You was literally in the scene of you slapping her around and beating on her, claiming that you're trying to wake her up, but really, I feel like that's a lie. Like, man, I just don't want to shit no shit, man. Cause I, like, man, to, buddy. I, I feel like if it was something I intensely did, whatever, I wouldn't, I would care. But it would be easier for me to take on. But yeah. For me to, like, be in a situation where I ain't mean nobody no harm. Well, Literally, I was asleep. Yeah. No, I was man. asleep. All this shit happened within 10, 20 minutes of me being awake. Like, it's crazy, right? I mean, that's. It's, I just like it is so. I could have just stayed asleep. It's crazy and stuff like that happens, and but it does like all the time. It's it's just weird when you look back on things and how, when you look back on how they played out, how they started. It's always stuff like that where you're like, what the heck? Man, it's it's not that. Yeah, yeah, it's never it's never the big stuff that lead to big issues. It's always these the small things. shit. Do you remember? I mean, going over a curb. Yeah. The house there? No, I Where never, you? I never went over a curb. That's why I would feel the bump. The only bump I ever felt was in the yard, and it wasn't even a big bump. And you, and you, you're positive. You got, you stopped in the yard, got out. I was in the yard. I, I, I know I was in the yard, just like this, like that. For me to be in the road and then go in the yard, it seemed like that it happened too fast for me to be all the way okay. in the road. Okay. I mean, you did say you was drinking too. Video shows you in the road and then going back and dragging her into the car. I wasn't the, in the road. The, what, like, what do you mean I dragged like, her in the car? Like, right here. Like after, I mean, it, when you came and then turned, hit her, and then... But see, stopped, that's what I'm saying. I didn't, I didn't turn and hit her. I got but, out the car. But you stopped in the road right here and went back and drug her to the car There's, by the arm. There is literally no way I could have sat here and drugged her. I don't want to see the video myself. Cause I, there's no way I could have dragged her hell before in the road. Wait, was, did he say? Wait, did he say he don't want to see the video himself? You Loki don't want to see what you did, or did he say he wanted to see the video himself? If you sure that you're innocent, you would want to see what actually happened, even though. Let's say if he didn't do what he claimed that he didn't do, he would have got out scot free. But at the same time, people can wrongly imprison people. I will take that in consideration too. I will will be honest with that. But obviously, he's lying about something. The fact that he don't want to see no video being replayed is going to make him look stupid, basically. How all that shit happened, it was too fast. Like, the dude was right next to me in his yard when he shot the two shots. Mm -hmm. So how could yeah, I have been in the road? Yeah, we saw him there, too. Yeah, so how would I be in the road? That's what I'm saying. I'm in his yard. My feet are on grass. And this is what I remember. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. You know, but you're saying that, I, like, a, like dead ass, there's no way that I went past the house. I never went past the house. Which house? The the house that the that she okay. was at that she, that I hit her at. I never went past the house first. Hmm. I was at the house when I pulled up. 
I was not in the road. If I was in the road, it was only a little bit. It had to be just a little bit. It was not the full car in the road. If I did stop in the road, it's, that's when I was talking to her, like, get in the car. But when I pulled in, I never just pulled in and hit her. Like, I got out the car. I'm stepping in grass. I remember because when I got out the car, I was, as soon as I got out the car, I was right there dragging her. I didn't drag her hella far. Only time I dragged her far was, like, equal, you could say far, is when I was at the church. Okay. All right. Um, it, was it at the church? Did you drag her like on concrete, or is it? All, you, I think you mentioned grass. I, be, I believe it was all grass, but like I'm telling you, I don't want to make no excuses. I don't want to see her like I'm trying to finesse shit. I don't want to be around the beating around the bush, protecting myself. Nothing. All I'm saying is. All I did and all I was focused on was making sure she's alive. I'm not paying attention really to what I'm dragging around. I'm not paying attention to where I'm dragging around, but what I believe is grass. Like, okay. Only way that she could even touch concrete is probably when I first pulled her out the car, but she wouldn't be on concrete that long. That's what I'm saying. It would be right there. Because you be, have the picture of my car. It's in the grass when it's parked at the church. Okay. Um... Is there anything else you can think of that we didn't ask you? No. Okay. Tired of guessing what's wrong with your YouTube videos? Well, vidIQ has the answers. Just connect your YouTube channel. The detectives would end the interview, and it would be another 24 hours before Cordante would be told he killed his girlfriend, and he was being charged with murder. In the end, Cordante would accept a plea deal for 17 years in prison. Mm, 17 years in prison! In the courtroom as Cordante Walker is handcuffed and escorted out. Okay. Man, since it's for killing his girl. His girlfriend on her birthday. I thought it was on his birthday, I was on her birthday. He's all out of pain! Everybody here heard no! The outburst sparking fury from both families. A poignant reflection of the deep pain and betrayal Luli Skimolin's mother is feeling. I loved you at one time. I accepted you into my family. And you promised me that you can be good to my daughter. See, see, you, you can't trust these bad boys, man. Yeah. I bet you wish you chose a nice guy, you know. I ain't, I ain't trying to diss, you know, your daughter, RIP to her. But she's stupid for being around a bad person. What you drinking for at night? Drinking while driving. What you beating her for? What you running her over with your car for? He's a grown man. If you don't know how to handle a bad situation, you obviously didn't have no mental training in your head, you know? Obviously. He failed me. You failed as a man, a father, and a son. A bitter tone as Bobby recalls the trust mm. she placed on then 23-year-old Cordante, now shattered and replaced by an overwhelming sense of loss. Mm -mm -mm. Luli spent the day celebrating her 23rd birthday on August 26th. Only 23 years old. She's only 23, a year younger than me. Just a year younger than me. She's young. She died at a young age. R.I.P. Don't know if she, if she was a good person or not, but R.I.P. 2020, the last time her family would ever see her alive. The celebration took a horrific turn as a witness reported waking up to screams and seeing the young mother lying in a bush while Cordante allegedly beat her and then ran her over. It sucks. It hurts. What, wait, he beat? Wait, allegedly. He said allegedly beat her and ran her over. Oh. To know that we waited three years to not even get what we really were hoping for, which was an answer as to why. The courtroom is silent with the wait. Oh, so this happened in 2020. So they waited three years. So the trial can go for three to five years. That's what I heard. I think, I don't know. Court system is not really on good people's side. It's sad. Of their grief palpable in the air. Everywhere they look, they have reminders of happier times. Looking forward, there is a void. Longing for the past and aching. She got a beautiful mole, by the way. She looks good. I got a mole like in my like eye, in my like head. I don't know why, but I like the mole near my eye. For some reason, I think that looked good on me, but it is, hey, that's just what you're born with. But she looked beautiful. I love, uh, Hispanic, I don't know if she's, I think she's Hispanic or Latin, I don't know, but whatever. She looks good with that mole, this look good. For a future that will never be. For my niece, it's, it's, it's hard to see because she comes up and we only got pictures. She says, I miss my mom. Luli's family oh, has been waiting up. for this date for years to face Cordante. Today, mm. he asked to face them. I truly, sincerely apologize. 
and how you guys feel needs to be validated. You feel me? So I just apologize. And uh, no love is lost on my side. I love all you guys, and you guys deserve this moment. A rare moment of humility as Cordante recognizes the irreparable harm he has inflicted on both families. His mother sharing her relationship with Cordante's father, saying they lived in House of Horrors, claiming their relationship had everything to do with his development and his explosion the night of Luli's death. And Cordante will have to live out the rest of his days knowing that it was at his hands the woman he will forever love lost her life. All eyes were on Judge Avril Rothrock, whose responsibility was to sentence Cordante. He was strangely cold, callous, and unmoved immediately after he ran over Ms. Kimolan. I have determined to impose a sentence on count two felony murder of 17 years or mm. 204 months. With the sentencing mm. behind him. 17 years, bro. That's, that's basically life, even though it's 20. That's it for this reaction video. That's it for this reaction video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.